do not leave this podcast without going to the link in the show notes or description and clicking on the link to learn our centralization process. We will show you what you're missing in your sadica recovery. And in this link, there will be a very important opportunity at the end for you to learn exactly what this plan could look like for you. Hello and welcome to episode 111 of the Low Back Pain Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Grant Elliott with Rehab Fix Online Low Back Program. Today's topic is understanding your pain. This is an extremely important topic that some people don't pay enough attention to, but understanding pain can dramatically change your relationship with pain, which can dramatically change the pain that you feel. So this could create an incredible impact on your life or those around you and completely change the way you look at pain and your understanding of it so that you can gain more knowledge for how to be pain-free. Before we dive into this topic, if you have not joined my private Facebook group yet, you need to do so. It is called Rehab Fix Low Back Program. Upon joining, you'll be tagged in our free step-by-step sciatica guide, the same one we have used to help thousands of people around the world resolve their sciatica and back pain. You will get this for free just by joining. I am also recording a step-by-step diagnosis for Sadika video and top exercises for Sadika that will only be available through this Facebook group. There are tons of other resources that you can take advantage of, thousands of dollars of worth of information in there that you can gain access to for free. Rehab Fix Low Back Program, go join it right now. Let's do a quick 101 on pain, okay? Pain is an experience and pain is affected by multiple variables. Fundamentally, pain can be created by three different sources, mechanical, thermo, or chemically mediated pain. Mechanical would be pressure. If there's enough pressure on a particular area, that can cause sensitivity to tissues and nerves and cause pain. Thermo, so temperature, extreme heat or high temperatures can create pain, such as a hot pan on an oven but also extreme cold temperatures can create pain as well. And then finally, chemical. We hear about chemical burns or chemically mediated pain from inflammation and things like that. Chemicals can create pain as well. However, there are many other influences that can enhance each of these three main categories of pain induction, such as your mental state, in regards to the amount of stress that you might be experiencing, stress on your work, in your family, in your relationships, day-to-day, things like that, that can affect your pain. The education you have on the particular problem that you might be experiencing can affect your pain. If you have a minor, I don't know, let's say bruise or bump on your body and you go to a doctor and they tell you, hey, this is fine, totally normal bruise, totally normal bump, nothing to worry about, normal ache and pain, it'll be gone within a few days no matter what you do, nothing to worry about. You're gonna feel very confident. If you go to that same provider and they tell you, oh my gosh, this is really bad, I'm surprised you're not in more pain, this could cause permanent damage to this area, you might not be able to do X, Y, or Z for the rest of your life, guess what? That person's gonna be afraid, they're gonna be in much more pain than the other individual. And we see this time and time again in studies and clinical practice. So one main point that I want to make here is the concept of pain sensitization. The longer you are in pain, the more enhanced your pain experience is. So what do I mean by this? There is something called a homunculus, which is a brain representation of the areas of our body that it controls. If you look up homunculus, you will see a figure with different size, abnormally sized regions of the body. And you can even see this distributed across the brain. It will be labeled showing you which areas of the brain attach to which area of your body and the sensitivity of those regions. Now, when a particular area is in pain for longer than is desired due to multiple of these things, both mechanical, thermo, or chemical, also influenced by the other biopsychosocial factors, The longer someone is in pain, the longer that area feels pain, the more sensitive that area becomes. The more sensitive that area becomes, the more susceptible it is to feeling pain from those experiences, which enhances the pain cycle and creates more chronicity. This is where the dangerous cycle 
of chronic pain comes from. Not necessarily because there is still active tissue damage to a region, but because perhaps poor education, poor understanding, and then long-standing pain in that area has caused so much sensitization of that region of the brain that is perceived to still be painful. An example could be, let's say I cut my finger. We all have seen cuts before. We have all seen them heal. However, if in one experience I cut my finger and I was not alarmed by it, the let's say my my spouse or my let's say I'm a little kid and my my mother um, comforted me, said it's no problem. Watch it heal. It's fascinating how the body can heal. I have a good education about it. That is not going to be something that is going to bother me into the future. However, if the opposite thing occurs, yes, there is some tissue damage that is real. But if I'm immediately terrified about it and it's turned into a very, very bad experience and then I am constantly thinking about it, I'm constantly worrying about it, I should have not even noticed it immediately after. But now I do notice that tissue damage far more because I'm paying attention to it, I'm afraid of it, that lasts a few more days longer than it should. Well, now I'm feeling more pain in my finger for maybe a week or even two weeks because that area of my body has been sensitized in my brain. And my brain decides what I feel. My body does not. Pain is not an input. Pain is an output. When I cut my finger, that cut did not tell my body to feel pain. That cut sent a signal to my brain. My brain decided whether I should feel pain or not based on the threat level. If I have minimal threat level, I will not, or at least I will most likely not experience pain. But if the threat level is very high, then I will. So what does this say? Let's say in that healing process, if my threat level is high because of the information I've been provided, because I was scared by my mother or by my spouse or whoever, and I'm very worried about the situation, I have a lot of anxiety, my job requires my hands, I'm afraid I might hurt it. Let's say that next week, I injure that same area again then that same signal goes to my brain, goes to the same area, that area is sensitized. That time, that injury is gonna feel far more worse than it would have in another situation. Exact same injury, but a very different pain response, which would feel heightened, more severe, cause more fear, all of these things. We need to understand that your brain is what decides what you feel. And there are many, many, many things that influence your brain and its response and experience to pain. So the best thing to do is to understand that pain is normal. Pain is normal. Pain is a fact of life. Pain is a tool because it's trying to warn us or inform us on ways to stay alive. That is its fundamental nature. Don't do this. Don't do that. Protect yourself. Stay alive. Pain can be our friend in certain circumstances. We do not always need to fear it. And in many cases, when it comes to typical neuromusculoskeletal injuries, pain is not equivalent to harm or to tissue damage, but rather a warning signal trying to protect you. So just because you have a low back injury, let's say, and you feel pain during certain movements, it does not mean it is causing more damage or injury to those tissues, discs, or nerves. It might just mean your brain or that region of your brain that controls your lower back is sensitized because of other factors. And so it is setting off those alarm signals, those bells, earlier and premature than it normally would have, thus creating a pain response and informing you to stop doing whatever movement that is. It does not mean the movement is bad. It means the brain or the nervous system is sensitive to it. So once we understand this, then we can understand how retraining our brain in our nervous system and calming down those alarm systems can be an extremely important aspect of long-term recovery. Yes, identifying a proper plan, the proper exercises, mobility, stability movements, all those things that we use to help our clients resolve their disc herniation or sciatica for good is a necessary aspect of this. However, many times an understanding of pain and a regrading process for exposing the nervous system to movement, to stimulus, to reduce the threat levels is a crucial aspect of this as well. 
getting the nervous system and the body used to movement, used to certain stimuli is very, very important for rewiring the brain in that particular region so that the sensitivity is reduced. So when you have put in the work, gained the mobility, done the exercises to resolve the disc herniation, done the exercises to calm down the nerve, those changes will stay because the brain was able to rewire at the same time and we are not leaving it at the same threat level. We need to address the body and we need to address the brain at the same time they work together. This is a very important aspect of rehab, which is why in our program, the very first chapter, the very first week, we have pain education lessons. I discuss more in-depth topics on pain, how to understand pain so you're not afraid of it. Later in the program, we have additional pain education lectures and seminars to help you understand these concepts because it can be so crucial to getting out of chronic long-standing pain. It is so important and not everything can be fixed with a pill or a quick adjustment or whatever. You need a plan to address your body, but you need supplementary information to address your brain as well because your brain is an important aspect of true long-term relief. And this is why we take these subjects so serious. This is why our plan is so in-depth on these types of lower back problems because they require a truly holistic approach. One that will actually work, one that will actually give you tools, one that will actually give you education. That is where long-term results come from. That is why we get the results that you see us share on our testimonials, on our Facebook pages, on our YouTube, on our Instagram every single day. This is why we get the results we do because we cover all these areas to the extent that they need. Because you need results, it's just a matter of finding the right plan. So if you would like to see what this plan could look like for you and you would like our help in doing so, then utilize the link in the description of this video so that you can schedule a call with us. You can learn about what we have to offer. You can learn about what this plan could look like for you and what you might be missing. Because listen, you can become pain-free. You just need to believe that you can and you need to take action behind that. Those who take action move forward towards their goals. Those who don't stay in the same place. And don't put the pressure on yourself to try to figure this out on your own. Back issues are very complex. Disc herniation, sciatic issues are very complex. It is our job, who are experts in this area, to give you a simple path and a simple plan because we have taken thousands of people through this and we know how to expedite the process. And we know how to get you results now. So let us do the work for you. Don't guess on your own. Don't become exhausted. Don't let the pain go on longer than it needs to. Invest in yourself, invest in a solution, let us do the work for you. We'll be honored to meet and show you how the path straight to results can look so you do not need to live with this any longer than you need to. Let's get you out of pain. Use the link in the description, schedule a call, let's talk. Please join our Facebook group, Rehab Fix Low Back Program to gain your access to our free step-by-step sciatic guide and learn more information about how we can help. If you are watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you are listening on your favorite podcast platform, please leave a five-star rating and review so we can grow this podcast and help reach more individuals who deserve to get results, who feel like they're spinning their tires and getting frustrated in doing so. As always, move more, move in nature, move in the sun. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.